What Mr. Wizard? That's what all the kids in the neighborhood call him because he shows them the magic and mystery of science in everyday living. Hi, Mr. Wizard. Hi, Buzz. What you doing? Hey, not so fast there. See what the sign says? Traffic radar patrol. Yeah, better slow down. Okay. What you doing? Well, have you ever seen one of these? Oh, sure, a radar antenna. Right, where have you seen them? Oh, on the lake, you know, they have a camp and the radar antennas and the anti-aircraft guns and a bunch of little huts and everything like that. Mm -hmm. You've probably seen them some other place, too. The airports? Right, they use them for bringing airplanes in in the soup. Mm -hmm. Right, well, this is a radar antenna. And, by the way, what is that thing you've got on your head? A hat. Oh, really? Good night. That's something I have never seen a hat like that before in my entire life. Um, we'll understand how this works, and we'll also, today, take a look at my special radar over here. You ever see anything that looks like this? Yeah, in a movie, they have this, um, thing here, and then everybody's looking at it, and they're marking down things. Oh, here. Let me turn it on. Well, a piece of light goes around like this. Uh-huh. Well, this is our radar scope, my own version. And before you leave today, we're going to use this radar scope to find two hidden planes that I have here in the room. You'll be able to plot them on the board just like they do in real life. Really? Yeah. Well, but in order for you to work this, you really have to know something about radar, don't you? Uh-huh. Okay. So let's first of all find out something about how radar, <coughs> how radar works. And you can do that over here in my special pinball machine. What does a pinball machine have to do with radar? Well, you'll see. See? Here's a pinball machine with only one track. Mm -hmm. Down here, there's a ball, which I can send up the chute, shoot like this up there to that end. See? Mm -hmm. Now, we are going to pretend that this ball moves at a constant rate of speed. Three feet per second. Okay? Three mm -hmm. feet per second. So, what we want to really find out with this ball is the, the length of this channel from here, where I'm going to let the ball go, up to the spring. We want to find the distance. So, I will pull back this plunger like this when you let, when that metronome rings a little bell up there. Now, you undo the metronome so it'll go. Now, that's set to tick every, once every second. And every other second, there's a little bell here. Yeah. Okay, now, when that bell rings, I'll count zero. And at the same time, let this ball go. You keep track of how many seconds it takes for the ball to go up and back. Okay. Okay, you ready? Zero. About two. Two? Let's try it again. See if we're checked for accuracy. Ready? Zero. Whoop, wait, wait, wait. Okay. Zero. Almost. A little too fast that time. Huh? About two seconds. Well, let's call two seconds. Now, can you stop the metronome up there? Now, if it took the ball two seconds to roll from here up to there, how, how far is it from there up to there? Well, since you said that um, this little ball goes three feet every one second, yeah. and, it took, and um, it took a second for it to go up to here, that means it's three feet. Right. And it took a second to come back. Mm -hmm. Another three feet. That's why it was two seconds. Okay, let's check your uh, measurements. I started down here at this little mark. Why does it come to up there? Three feet. Just right. Just right. Well, so you see how we can measure distances by using time and something that moves at a constant speed. Now, you seem a little surprised about the fact that uh, we were going to investigate radar using a special pinball machine. Yeah. Doesn't make any sense. What Doesn't make any sense. What does this have to do with radar? Well, they don't use pin, uh, balls, of course, but they do use something that's more like this. See this spring here? Would you help me move our radar uh, okay. and set it back out of the way? Okay. That's neat. <clears throat> now, you take a hold of one end of the spring. And I'm going down here across the room. And you hold on to the spring nice and tight, because I'm going to hit it like that, and I want you to describe and see if you can figure out what happens. Okay? Okay. what's happening. <coughs> when you hit it, well, it makes a sort of a wave coming down, and then it hits my hand and bounce back, like the pinball machine. And that 
That's right. Now, they don't use springs like this in radar, do they? Mm, I don't think so. But we did have a wave form. It went down, bounced back. Mm -hmm. Now, can you think of any other types of waves? Well, there's a sound wave. Oh, of course, then there's a wave in the ocean. Then there's a light wave. There's a radio wave. Now, heat wave. Radar uses one of those waves. Can you tell me which one? I don't, I'm not quite sure. Well, you know what radar stands for? R-A-D-A-R. -A That's actually an abbreviation. It is? For mm -hmm. what? It means radio detection and ranging. Oh. So what kind of waves must it use? Radio waves. Radio waves. That's right. And exactly the same way that the ball rolled up and back, and this wave went up and down in the, in the spring, they use radio waves to do the same thing. See, down here is an antenna, and it sends out uh, little bursts of uh, radio waves like this. Now, when they go up here and hit something like an airplane, they bounce back. All scientists have to do now is measure the time it takes to go out and back. They've got how far away the plane is. Sure. Well, it's not so hard, isn't it? No. Well, uh, one of the other places where they use radar is not to find out how far away something is, but how fast something is going. Traffic radar patrol. Right. Have you ever seen a sign like that? I think so. I'm not quite sure. When we were driving along in the um, country, we saw this, um, I know there was a speed, two signs. I think one was a speed sign and one was that sign. And there was a couple cars by the road. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, that was a uh, police set up for radar uh, control of highway speeds. Here, let's set up a little highway so you'll understand how it works. See those cars underneath there? Mm -hmm. Well, you uh, put them up on top of the table. The signs, too? Yeah, the signs, too. Now, here's our highway. See? And here we will first po uh, post a speed sign, 25 miles per hour. Now, why is it important that we have speed uh, limits on roads? Well, because if you didn't, Nick, you'd go too fast and you may crack, crack up and, oh, you, you know, he, you, you could hit somebody and, um, you know, the car goes out of control and you go too fast and you can't stop. Right. So it's important not only for the safety of the people who are in the car, but for the safety of everybody who lives in the neighborhood or who might be driving there. Mm -hmm. So it's important that we have speed uh, limits. Now, when they are going to post uh, a radar car here, they are always sure that they also have a sign that announces this fact, just like that real one that we had up on the door, huh? Radar, or traffic radar patrol, see? Just like this. Now, when they are uh, patrolling it, they have a police car that's parked alongside of the road like this. In the back here is a radar set, and it sends a stream of radio waves out across the highway. Gee, it must be pretty small to fit in the back. Well, it is. In fact, I've got a real one right here. Do you? It sends out waves like this. Come on over here. I'll get the real one out and you'll see. Gee, that is small. Mm -hmm. Okay, now here is a, something like the speedometer on your car. The radio waves come out here, go out and bounce back. So this is both the transmitter and the receiver. Mm -hmm. see? And up here is a dial. You can see it's calibrated in miles per hour. See, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, and so forth. Uh -huh. So the policeman in the car can not only see this, but they also have a uh, paper graph that goes around and they can record, record. You know, on that so they have a permanent record. Now let's see if I can run the little wheels of this car. See it move? Well, we'll run the wheels of this car and see if I can make it go real fast. Gee, it's going up to 80, 70 and 80. Mm -hmm. Try it again. Now, really, the little car isn't going that fast yeah. at all, but um, uh, at least it shows you how the radar works, because this is a real model that would be used on real cars going down the highway. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's pretend that we have a speeder coming along down here. We'll see what happens. See, the policemen are down here, and they have this radar beam going out across the highway. Now here comes a speeder. He's a dangerous person. So when he begins coming down the road like this, the policeman here in this car can see that he might be going too fast. So they note the color of the car and the make and the license mm -hmm. number and so forth. And when he comes along down here into the radar control zone, the radar or the radio waves go out here, hit his car, right, and bounce back. 
So the faster they come here and bounce back, the faster he's going, right? Mm -hmm. So they can look on their dial and also on their graph and see that he was actually going faster, and then they radio to a squad car up ahead, and then they pick him up. Gee, the guy doesn't, doesn't have much chance, does he? Well, actually, he has three chances, Buzz. He was warned that 25 miles an hour was the safest, uh, was the best speed that he should go. To, uh, he shouldn't go any faster than that to be safe. Mm -hmm. He was also warned that this was radar controlled, so there was a second chance. And third chance, he has a chance to drive again because the police uh, gave him a ticket for speeding and he now can drive again before he did any damage. Mm -hmm. So he has really three chances. Well, now, you see how the radar works? Yep. Okay, would you help me put the cars back underneath again? Okay. Radar, please. By the way, I noticed that uh, funny hat. Let's take another look at that crazy thing. Do you like it? The latest thing for spring. Well, um, I guess I could give you a break and say that it makes you look handsome. Uh, well, that's a funny looking thing on the top here. That's... Oh, it's a pillar. Oh, you yeah. You should see it go around in the wind. Well, be careful you don't take off somebody like a helicopter. Say, that wouldn't be a bad idea, Mr. Wizard. Everybody with their own little helicopters built into their hats. Boy, you could fly over puddles and watch ball games for nothing. And you could even fly in your own bedroom window with, without even coming through the front door. Well, I'm afraid it's going to be a little while before they'll be able to perfect a helicopter like that. <laughs> Meanwhile, I think about all that hat is doing is keeping your hair in place and uh, keeping your head warm. Oh, it can do more than that. Really? In fact, it's not at all bad if you want to do a little advertising with it. The, um, little the propeller color? going yeah. around on top attracts attention. And then I use these little buttons, and, 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 and I stick my messages oh, on Oh, I noticed those buttons. Here, let's see. This one says, well, wait a minute here. The hat's kind of crooked. Or, I mean, it's uh, in the front, been up in the front. Now, let's see. This one says, want to trade stamps. Oh, you've been adding to your stamp collection, huh? Trying, but no takers yet. Yeah. How about this one? This says, uh, what's his name? And there's a funny-looking thing on it. Oh, that's for, that's reminded all the kids in our in the neighborhood about our parrot contest. Oh, that's what that is. It's a parrot. Oh, and by the way, you might be uh, uh, interested to know that a lot of your friends have sent in suggestions for names, too. Mm. How about this one over here? Let's see, what is that? Uh, oh, uh, that's a... <coughs> uh, uh, well, um, here's some I just added. Let's see here. This one says... Now, wait, i got to get your propeller out of the way. Follow the rules of good health. Fruit, cereal, milk, bread and butter. Which is the way to get started on those rules of good health every day. Well, it certainly is. And, and in spite of the fact that you that you've got those unbuttons all over your head or all over your hat, it's really very, very important and very serious. Because you see, Buzz, nutrition experts know that it's important for all of us to get from one-fourth to one-third of our entire day's food needs from the breakfast weed. And they also know there's no better way to get them than from a breakfast like you are wearing there or like this one up here on the wall. See? A breakfast of fruit, cereal, milk, bread and butter. Or other foods for a variety like eggs or breakfast meats. That's the kind of breakfast I had this morning and it sure tasted good. Well, it does taste very good, Buzz, but really even more important than that. Doctors at a, a big Midwest medical school have just finished a series of scientific tests on children just about your age. And they found that when you had a good cereal breakfast, like that other one over there, for instance, you're able to do more and better work, and you felt better, too, especially during the late morning hours. And, and teachers have found that boys and girls will do better in school and at play when they start each day with a good breakfast. And, of course, that's, that's important advice for, for adults and teenagers, too. And that's why we say it's smart to start every day with a good breakfast. Wait a minute. Of... Fruit, cereal, milk, bread and butter. <laughs> of course, it's... It's also important that you follow the other rules of good health, like uh, getting plenty of sleep, and exercise, fresh air, water, rest, and two other well-balanced meals a day. Which I do yeah. every day. Good. Then you're just bound to be healthy and strong and get a lot more fun out of life, too. Meanwhile, uh, looking at that hat, I'd say that you have a lot on your mind. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a very, very effective hat. And good luck with your advertising. <laughs> Now, let's see if you can remember what we were talking about today, radar. Can you tell me how it works now here? Oh, sure. Now, there's your radar screen. Mm -hmm. And that sends little waves out, little radi radio waves, and it hits a plane or whatever they want it to hit. 
Then the waves bounce back. Come over here and they go back to their screen. Mm -hmm. Then they can measure how far it is. How? By the speed. By the time it takes time. for the radio wave to go out. Now remember, radio waves, however, are very, very fast. They're, they go with the speed of light. You know how fast radio and uh, light waves move? I don't think so. Well, listen very carefully. 186,000 miles per second. Gee, that's fast. That's fast. So if the thing that you were going to uh, beam your radio radar beam at were only a thousand feet away, it would take two millionths of a second to go over and come back. Gee, that'd be a lot harder than to do with our pinball machine because well, that measured by feet. You certainly seconds. wouldn't be able to use seconds, would you? Because <laughs> no. two millionths of a second would go so fast. <coughs> so the big problem is, how are they going to be able to read anything moving that fast? Well, they have a special way of doing it called a cathode ray scope. And it's a tube, something like the front of your television. You know, the tube, oh, yeah, big, big out and here, and it slants smaller. down back here. Well, let's take a look at the front of that tube. And here's my version of the front of it right here. See? Now, let me turn it on first. We get our radar set warmed up. Now, there's a stream of electrons that are shot up from the back of the tube up to hit this face. And wherever the stream of electrons hits it, the, the, it will be changed into visible light and it will glow with a little spot of light. You might say something like that. See the little spot there? Oh, yeah. Okay. Now this gun is made, this stream of electrons is made to move across the face of the tube. So it can move from like this, eh? across the tube. Now, it moves from one position to the next, let's say, in a, in a millionth of a second. So you are going to be the radar signal now. You're the radio beam, see? And you're going to go out in that direction and then bounce back. Mm -hmm. And you put your feet down like this, see, and you move them like that. Every time you do that, I will advance that dot over there, and we'll pretend that you do this in a millionth of a second. Mm. So you go out there for ten steps. Meanwhile, you watch what happens to this dot. Okay? Okay. It's now on zero. One, Count. two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Ten. I'm out here. Okay, now you bounce into the wall and bounce back, okay? Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, now the little dot is down here, isn't it? Uh-huh. And notice this is way out here at ten. And that's exactly how many steps you took out. Well, they automatically right. divided it in half, just like you did over there with the, with the ball bearing that rolled up and down uh, in our pinball machine, right? Now, however, they have to have some indication that the echo came back here, don't they? Mm -hmm. So they take this echo, you see, which is the radio signal, and run it in here to the scope, and instead of make the dot coming straight out like it did before, they now make it move up like that, so it moves over there. And this makes a little hump in the line, and it's called a blip. B-L-I-P, <laughs> blip. Now let's try the same thing again, but let's go out only five steps. So I'll run this back up to zero. Remember this light in reality is moving a million of a second from here to there. So, so it's going like very that. fast. Now notice this time I had I, you were walked out in that direction so I had this pointed down here. This time why don't you walk in this direction. So I'll turn this around here like that. Okay. Where do I get my uh, old spot of light set here? Okay. I'm at zero. And you're at zero. Okay. All right. One, two, Three, four, five. Only five? Okay. Bounce back. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Five. And at this point, would be the blip, right? Mm -hmm. So the little light would move up like this. <laughs> now, really, remember I told you these were going so fast that it doesn't look like a little dot moving across here. But it actually looks like a line. Like that. And see, here would be the blip, or the line distorted here at five. So, Mr. Wizard, what, why don't they have it all the way across like that? Well, they could do it well, many more miles and more quicker. That's true. It does look like they could do many more miles, but there's a reason why they have it start at the middle and go out here. Maybe you can get some idea about the reason if we look at this antenna over here. Okay, now here is the antenna here, see? And the radio waves are actually sent up here to this little plate. And they're sent out here, and they hit the screen and bounce out 
so that we are sending our radio beams right out in that direction. So, uh -huh. Okay, now they're going out in that direction, so let's turn this line that's going back and forth down in this direction. Let's now, go. which way is that pointing? South. South, 180 degrees. And we could then have south 180 degrees down here. Okay, now you turn on the, the antenna. Now what does it say down there? Nine, uh, 270? Yeah, 270. Now west, north, north, zero. zero. And now what east, happens 90. over here? 90. And what, well, well, whoop, 180. I'm getting by. I'm left, being left behind. We're on west now. Oh, there. Okay, there's west. Actually, okay, now they're north zero. Okay, and I'd move it around here to east, right? Uh -huh. Now, do you see why they don't have the line go all the way across? Well, they sure. Better turn it off now. Because this is just going around, and so they don't right. need it. Well, the point is that if you are going to tell somebody where I am in regard to you, you stand up there nice and straight now. Now, if you're going to describe to somebody where I'm standing, what would you say? So you're about two feet away from me, all right. Off to your right. Mm -hmm. If I moved over here, two feet away, on my back. Behind you, mm -hmm. all right. Now, in order to describe where an airplane is, something unknown, what do they have to know? We've already seen how you could describe they're five miles away, let's say. Mm -hmm. But how they have to know what direction, don't they? Yeah, so they can use the 270. Right, the 270. So, for instance, if the, if the antenna was in that position, we'd have it down here about like this, right? So it's a little more than 180, halfway between 180 and be about, no, what, south, uh, south, southwest. About there, and they could say five miles, and everybody would know it'd be exactly right there. Sure. So that's why that thing is going around. Yeah, they can use the circle. Okay, well, now that you've been checked out, how would you like to be a radar operator finding unknown airplanes? Hey, fine. Well, that's what I built this thing, this scope over here for, see? Now, let's run it around here so, so you can... Uh, Okay, now here is a light beam. And you see, and when I turn this motor on, this light is going to swing around the room. Mm -hmm. see, I don't have it on at the moment. Now, a couple of different places in the room, and don't you look, I have he mirrors hidden. And I want you to be able to tell me where those mirrors are without looking, just using this radar scope. Because you see, the light is going out from here, straight out that way. And it's going to hit those mirrors and then bounce back at this mirror right here. You see it? Oh, yeah. And then over this is like our receiver. So, the light is going to be reflected down from that mirror, down here onto the face of our radar scope. Also, well, so, so when we see a little square of light, well, then we know that we'll know that that's there. where the mirror was. Or we'll a plane. We'll enemy pretend plane. those are our enemy planes. Okay, now, you then can look where you see a patch of light down here, and notice here's 270, 225, 180, 135, and so forth, you know, all the various degrees. Mm -hmm. And also here, these lines are 5, five 10, 15, 20 miles. So you'll be able to tell how far away and in what direction. Five, ten, fifty. Okay, you all set? Mm hmm Well, let's warm up our radar set. Oh, wait, before, before we do that, here's our communication system. See, because I'm going over to the other side of the room in the radar control headquarters, and you'll have to talk back and forth to me, see? Roger. So you find them and then call over to me, okay? Okay, we all set? See our little line down here? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll go over on the other side. Radar control uh, headquarters in operation. One, two, three, four. Do you read me? I'm reading you. One, two, three, four. Roger. Over and out. Okay, you can get set to receive them and turn out the lights over there. Okay. Enemy plane, 315, 15 miles out. Roger, uh -huh. got it. Enemy, 
plane about 50 degrees, 10 miles out. Enemy plane, 50 degrees, 10 miles out. Roger. Enemy plane, 315 degrees, 15 miles out. Enemy plane, 315, about 15 miles out. Enemy plane, 50 degrees, 10 miles out. Enemy plane, 50 degrees, about 10 miles out. Okay, radar operator, would you uh, shut off your uh, instrument and turn on the light and come on into head headquarters? Okay, snowman. Well, you did pretty well. You found them both, didn't you? See, over here on the on the piece of uh, plastic uh, that you have to write backwards here. Have you, <laughs> know, you seen them in the movies, how they write backwards here? Oh, yeah. Well, I don't let's know see how what I did. It. When you said 315 degrees, I went up here 315 degrees and 15 miles out, and I put a uh, mark down there. Then you said 50 degrees, they 10 miles out. See, so I put a mark there. Now, actually, the mirrors didn't move, did they? No, they were stationary, yeah. but in real life, the, the airplanes would move, wouldn't they? Uh -huh. So instead of just being a dot like this, they would trace it. For instance, if they, the next, uh, the next uh, uh, blip that came through, maybe uh, another 30 seconds later, they, it would move maybe same 50 degrees, but this time it might be 15 miles out. So they would put arrows like this, see, up here to 15. That would indicate that the plane moved from there to there. Uh -huh. Now, meanwhile, they're keeping track of all the traffic in the whole area, friendly airplanes, uh, you know, and airlines and fighters, and everybody has to file a flight plan. So you really wouldn't know from over there whether you had an enemy plane or not. You just know there was an airplane up there, see? Okay, so now you can trace these all around and keep track of the whole thing, and that's how they keep track of radar. Well, now, you suppose you could track yourself right home on account it's about time for you to go. Well, what are we going to do next week? Well, next week we're going to investigate problems and solutions. Oh, you mean arithmetic? Well, no, although I think that might be kind of exciting. This is a different kind of solution. The kind I've got right here. What is it? Well, I'm not going to tell you, but have you got a handkerchief? Yep, yeah, one right here. Okay, is it a good one? Yeah. Good. May I borrow it? Yeah. Here are some matches. Okay, would you get a match ready? And when I get this handkerchief out on the end of this rod, would you please light it? Yeah, but it's my good handkerchief. It's all right. You go ahead and light it. See what happens? Boy, look at her burn. Gee, Marie. Nothing happened. Gee, can we do that again? Sure. Don't forget to be with us next week for another exciting program of mystery and magic and everyday things when the Serial Institute invites you to watch Mr. Wizard. By the way, Mr. Wizard lives in Chicago.